Is it possible to predict finger movement just from a bracelet on your forearm? That is insane. That's the question I've been chasing for three years, and I finally have an answer. I kept seeing amazing prosthetic sensor tech tested on amputees, but they couldn't take the hardware home. Why? Because it was proprietary. That made me mad. So I started Open Muscle, an open source, open hardware project to build prosthetic sensors, passive human interface devices, and even experimental VR input systems that anyone can access. But dreaming big isn't enough. I had to break this down into achievable goals. Create a bracelet that can detect pressure across the forearm. Train a machine learning model to predict finger motion. Design a way to label training data accurately. Make the whole thing wearable and user friendly. Release it all as open source hardware and code. Simple, right? Yeah, no, it took three years. It started with a bulky matrix with two by six pressure sensors made of springs, magnets, Hall effect sensors. Ugly, yeah, but it worked. I proved I could capture high resolution muscle activity with enough signal to noise to distinguish finger motion. But raw data wasn't enough. I needed labels. I needed to use supervised learning where the model knows what finger is moving at each moment. That meant building something new, the LASK-5. It's a handheld device that lets me capture finger flexion and extension, which is highly reliable and easier to build than the bracelet. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was struggling with the bracelet. My old version was over three centimeters thick, fragile, and the battery life was a joke. It used three microcontrollers and broke if you looked at it funny. Then someone in the YouTube comments said, why don't you use piezo sensors woven around the forearm? That made me think back to my very first sensor prototype, which actually used Velostat. After that comment simmered for a while, I decided to start designing the Flex PCB. And that's where we're at today. I switched to the Flex PCB matrix design, mixing Velostat layers and multiplexers. Suddenly the bracelet was under three millimeters thick, lightweight wearable, and actually comfortable. Of course, nothing worked right away. I ran into LDOs overheating, OLED screens refusing to light up, and Wi-Fi bugs in MicroPython that needed full power cycling workarounds just to scan networks. The real kicker? The $2 OLEDs I bought on Amazon weren't real SSD1306s. They had counterfeit chips that failed silently. Lesson learned? Test your components before soldering them onto a custom board. Once I had a working flex grid, I recorded two minutes of training data using the LASK-5. Then I launched the prediction model live, using the exact same spot on my arm. At first, nothing seemed to work. I thought I broke something again. But then, it started predicting Ooh. in real time. It just picked up the middle finger too. <gasps> it picked up the ring finger. On the left, you can see the live output from the pressure band, while on the right, you can see the finger values, blue being the real, tan being the predicted. The model wasn't perfect, but it worked. The bracelet worked. The idea worked. This is the moment I knew this is possible. That is insane. This is not with that much data. It is placed same on my arm. Now I'm working on a fully stable version of the Flex Grid in LASK-5 so that anyone, hackers, roboticists, artists, can experiment with real-time muscle sensing. All the code, schematics, and PCB files are on GitHub. I post dev logs, YouTube shorts, and make video updates as much as I can. If you want to help, join the Discord or support the project on Patreon. And if nothing else, a like and subscribe goes a long way. Let's see if we can make a positive difference in this world. Till next time.